Here we are. What's up? My name's Ben. I'm Nicole. And this is not Wicked and Grim. This, this is a Wicked Life. This is a Wicked Life. And we are talking about Casey Anthony. Yeah. The elephant in the room, eh? Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Is that one way to sum it up? Definitely. Um, really quick, if you don't know our podcast, Wicked and Grim, we cover a lot of true crime stuff. Casey Anthony's case was one of them. Mm -hmm. And she just came out with a new documentary. Casey Anthony, Where the Truth Lies. On Peacock TV. Yeah. Ironically enough, well, because this whole documentary, she's talking about her truth, right? Mm -hmm. And ironically, the, the, the name of it. Yeah, the title really gets you, doesn't it? Well, she's talking about her truth. And in the title, it already says, The Truth Lies. She lies. She lies. I mean, it was already known that she's a... Well, pathological, pathological liar. liar. Yeah, hundred percent. And I don't think that this documentary has convinced anyone otherwise. I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> um, forgive us if we're going to be glancing at our phones. We got a little bit of notes going on here, so we can kind of stay in order and uh, some of the stuff we want to cover. So, you want to do it? Want to get into this? Want to talk well, about? We got, yeah, we first. Should just discuss the story of what, True. like, who are, who's Casey Anthony, who's Kaylee Anthony. And because you did that podcast, let's have you kind of give us a, a, a brief rundown summary. Yeah. Okay. So quick rundown. If you don't know who Casey and Kaylee Anthony is, I'm going to adjust my mic here. Um, Casey Anthony, uh, this is a true crime case where 31 days had gone by and Casey's mother phoned 911 in a panic because she figured out that Casey just admitted that her daughter Kaylee or her granddaughter, because Casey's daughter and her mom phoned, right? Yeah. So her mom phoned, <clears throat> excuse me, her granddaughter has been missing for 31 days. Casey just admitted it. Mm -hmm. Panicked. She even had said at one point in there that the, the car smelled like a dead body. We'll touch on that. But panicked. She's been missing. Investigation starts. Casey spirals out of control with lies left, right, and center. Tons of lies. For example, the the uh, babysitter who supposedly Nanny was last or whatever, seen yep. with her daughter. Doesn't exist. Doesn't even exist. Not even real. Yeah. Just made it up. She took the investigators to her workplace. Yep. Took them right in there, like down the hallway, out, and then turns around. Ha, ha, I actually don't work here. Yeah. Like, it was at, it was at Uni Universal Studios. It was like a 25-minute walk across the park to, to her office. She finally gets to the destination where her office is supposed to be. She laughs and says, yeah, I don't work here anymore. Like, what is with that? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So at that moment, she was arrested and officially suspect number one. Yeah. Kaylee's body was unfortunately later found. Kaylee was, I believe, three years old, just mm -hmm. turned three or about to turn three. Yeah. Uh, she was found wrapped in a Winnie the Pooh blanket in a garbage bag with duct tape in proximity to her face. Now, her body was too decomposed. They couldn't tell the, the the cause of death in the autopsy or anything and with a too decomposed body that was found months later not a lot of evidence not a lot of evidence and then casey did say that she had up until she witnessed a new story saying that kaylee they found her body she was still believed that she was alive yeah so throughout all this goes to court and lack of evidence, she was acquitted on the murder of her child. Even though 99.9% .9 of the whole entire world, because this was a very widely there was an uproar. case, um, believed she was, yeah. she was uh, guilty. And spoiler alert, we're not certain that this documentary will make you think anything otherwise. Yeah. It didn't convince us, to no. say the least. No. Um, yeah. And Casey, I'm pretty sure, is still a pathological liar. Though in the documentary, she swears up and down that she's like, yes, I used to lie so much about everything. I was a terrible liar. I don't know why I did it. But you can believe me now. Yeah. I'm telling the truth now. That's I what mean, she says. People can change. They can change. So, in, and she had about 10 years or so. So she could change. But uh, even her, just, there was just so much in there, body language, whatever, like we'll touch on. We're not certain that she did. Well. If you're going to go from lying about literally any detail about your life, like graduating college, for example, which to be fair, her parents helped her with that lie. But even still, you're going to go from being a pathological liar, consistently lying left, right and center about everything to just say, oh, I'm good now. You can believe me. You need to build up trust to get to that point. Mm -hmm. 
what has she done to prove that she's nothing? Right. She's just believe me now. It's okay. I'm good. Yeah. Like this document, she has honestly made me more confused. If anything, probably she made her rapport worse because she's now also a defense attorney herself. Which well, I don't they're not, not an attor- attorney. She's like helping on the, on the team. So yeah, yeah, she's on the defense attorney team and they're known for twisting truths and coming up with alternative storylines. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, her body language was a big thing. I watch these guys on YouTube. Um, I'll, I can't remember their name, but I'll link them down below and I'll put a little like title so you know what their name is. Yeah, because I haven't watched this yet and I really want to. But these four individuals who like that's their career is studying body language. Mm-hmm. Um, they, that's what their YouTube is all about. They break down the documentary a bit and they tear Casey to shreds, like to shreds. Um, one of the things they talk about uh, her hair. Because she's constantly like fixing her hair and like. I mean, she looked damn to, good in this documentary. That, I was like kind of impressed. Like, that's surprised. what she's concerned about. She's concerned with looking her best. She very much so was. I can admit that. And they talk about that. They're like in the beginning. Okay, sure. You're like you're getting ready. You're, the cameras are first on you. You're making you make sh- making sure your makeup and hair is good and you're sitting in good posture. But as you're talking about a story on you being accused of murder of your own three-year-old child. You think someone would start to fall apart. You think that you oh, would yeah. not be concerned with the way you look and the story and the death of your child. But she's consistently fixing her hair, making sure she looks good. Well, because even for the last 10 years, she's pretty much just, I feel like she said she like hermited herself, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, she can't really go out because people don't recognize her and she's not really a liked person. Yeah. And so she was just so comfortable. The whole time in this, like, it was almost like she was acting. It was, it blew my mind actually, oh, yeah. because I just feel like if I was in her shoes in this position, I mean, I would be so uncomfortable. Well, that tear wiping moment. Yeah. Okay. So while we were even watching it, you pointed out because yeah. she at one point wiped like a tear, but she wasn't crying like whatsoever. It was near the beginning. And you have said, you said, if you're crying, like a tear is going to come like the here, lowest, the lowest point in your like eye, in right? the corner or the lowest point. Yeah. And she just was like, she did it. I believe it was like one of the tips of her finger. She's like getting upset and she's like, yeah, it really was very fake. Terrible acting though. To give her props, she did have some good acting points in there. I think. She did. Like I was <laughs> actually shocked. She did so good. Yeah. And then there was just things that. But over the top. I didn't believe seemed it. Seemed like so scripted. So one morning she wakes up, right? She yep. comes like they okay. So she would they were at like an Airbnb. They didn't want she didn't want to be have these Filming people in her, her home, yeah. rightfully so. And so she wakes up and what she is asked, like, how was your sleep? With the camera already on her, by the way. And she's done up. Yeah. Like looking good. So this is totally not planned. <laughs> and um, yeah, they're just like, How was your sleep? And and how did she respond? She was like basically like, What sleep? She she said, There's no such thing as a good sleep for me, or something like that. There's like no, the, for the, me, there's no such thing as a good The thing. last 10 years, she hasn't got a wink. Who fucking says that? Yeah. Like what? You you think it'd be like, oh, it's not bad or the bed's a little bit harder. I slept like a rocker. I'm pretty anxious about this. I, mean, I was tossing and turning. But who says there's no such thing as good sleep for me? Well, she's looking like a million bucks. I know, right? I mean, maybe she got her makeup done and shit, but I feel like if I haven't slept for the last 10 years, I, uh, I ain't going to look that good. Yeah. But then she goes on and makes breakfast for him and is like, oh, I've never made breakfast for anyone in like the last 10 years. But she has a roommate. She's just trying to isolate herself, make herself seem, oh, poor pity me, which is the biggest theme in this entire oh, documentary. It really, really she is. She plays victim the entire time. And Peacock TV lets her do it. The documentary is about as biased as you as they come. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. But we'll, uh, we'll kind of touch on that at the end. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next thing we wanted to touch on is that – so she – okay, so for the 31 days that Casey – it's so hard. So I always want to say like the wrong name. I have to like – Because they're Casey. very they're similar. They're very, very similar, yeah. So the whole time that little Kaylee was missing, um, Kate, Casey was kind of like living it up. It seemed oh, yeah. like she was living it up. Like she was out with friends. There's pictures of her online like partying and like in real social events and everything. So it's like what kind of – grieving mother who has a missing child abducted child so she claimed from the nanny that doesn't exist yeah why are they out partying why are they out enjoying because if she literally didn't know where her daughter was like she would be doing a search party yeah because she was obsessed with her daughter she did like like her and enjoy her and while she was out she ended up getting a tattoo which i believe it was bella vita which is like 
the good life or the something it translates life. to. You literally get this tattoo while your child is missing. Yeah. And so since that time, she has gotten it covered up. Yes. But she said that the tattoo was basically in spite of her family. Yep. Right? Like she doesn't like her family. She doesn't have a relationship with her family. So why did she get it covered up if it was a big like F you to her family? Like she was embarrassed that she got that done, I think, when oh, yeah. Kaylee was missing. Yeah. Because that was a big thing people are pointing. Why did you get that tattoo when Kaylee's missing? The good life. That is so bad. Yeah. So she's clearly, I think, redacting that from her life and trying to make up a reason as to why. Yeah. So next thing. Well, it was kind of the reason why it was the big like, fuck you. F you. Sorry. Got to watch the swearing on YouTube. Yeah. The F you to her family. Yeah. Our podcasts were not so censored. Hey. Yeah. But so her, she said that her father and her brother sexually assaulted her. Yes. Growing up. And more so her father. Yes. But well, I think her, her father kind of, she said, stopped around the age of 12 or somewhere within there. I'm oh, not and sure then her, exactly. that was kind of when her brother started. Yes. Which is horrific. It's horrific. Oh, yeah. hundred percent. I mean, there's no to say that they did or didn't. That I was about to say, if it's true. Yeah. Because, I mean, she is a pathological liar. We don't know for sure. But. Yeah. So anyway, they were, they were assaulting her. I do think in jail, though, the memories and stuff kind of ended up coming to they, her a little bit more. They did. And there are letters she was writing to another like cellmate because they were both in like solitary confinement. And in those letters, she was talking about it. So I'm, I, I kind of believe her with the sexual assault thing because there is evidence from 10 years ago of her talking about it already and not just making it up post sort of thing. I do. This just actually popped in my head. I wonder why she was in solitary confinement because she wasn't really like threat to anyone, was she? It was probably because she was up for murder of her child. Oh, and like would not have done well. Yes. With the other inmates. Yeah. Oh, okay. not with general pop. Duh, I should have. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. That just kind of popped in my head here. Um, but the whole thing though, she, she's, she's taking the blame completely off her shoulder in this whole incident. Oh yeah. She has no blame whatsoever. She's putting all the blame on her father, on her dad, on the one who abused her as a child. He's the monster. That's the whole point of this documentary is to paint him as the one who did this oh and she paints him bad oh yeah like about as bad as you can get and this man can't, he doesn't defend himself he's not in the documentary yeah and to be fair the documentary to be fair to be fair you you did that perfectly and i don't even think you know what you're referencing but that's okay um <laughs> um so she does not come out and say and blame her dad exactly. She says he's the one who was kind of the puppet master. And she, without saying it, blames him of murder. Yes. So I'm going to kind of explain how this okay, played out. Okay, are you going to do that? Okay. So how this all went down, how she says this happened was she was sleeping with Kaylee in the She bed. wasn't feeling well. Yeah. So she So she it was fell midday asleep. and she wasn't, and she yeah. was taking a nap. So the thing. TV was on and she accidentally fell asleep and then her father woke her up and Kaylee was missing. And he's like, where's Kaylee? And then so they start looking around for Kaylee and outside in the yard, all of a sudden she sees her father approach with Kaylee soaking wet, limp in his arms. And like he, she had just drowned. Yeah. And then he hands her off to Casey. Casey falls to her knees, um, panicking, like, oh my God, this is terrible. And then he takes her back and says, don't worry, she'll be all right. I'm going to deal with I'm this. I'm going to deal with this. And he walks off into the house. Then 31 days later, she doesn't get to see her daughter at all in that meantime. And that call is made and then investigation. And then Kaylee's body is found and trial. And here we are today. Yes. So that is what she claims occurs. However, there's a bit more to it. She also claims that during the sexual assault events, when she was younger, her father used to smother her with a pillow. To the point of passing it. Or she basically blackout. Yeah. And she says he must have done the same to her. Yes. And then Hensing, because she doesn't write out say it, but Hensing that um, she something must have gone wrong. And well, I he's mean, covering his it tracks. would be very easy for something to go wrong in that instant. That's so a that's, very fine line. Yeah. That's why I was even like, if he was doing that to her. Because he had sexually assaulted her numerous times, yep. as, as far as she claims. I I don't see how she would have survived that. I mean, it is possible. It's possible. But it's what, possible. 
But what Kaylee henses without flat out saying it, she very clearly does not say it, but she very clearly henses it, um, is that her father must have assaulted Kaylee as well. Yes. Used the pillow technique. She did not wake up, fabricated a fake drowning, then waked up Casey. Oh no, discovered the body and then dealt with it. Yeah. What was that? I couldn't find a contact oh. name. Casey no discovered the body. <laughs> All right. Wow. Google's listening. Google's listening. We're to on us. an FBI watch list. Okay. But the thing is that her dad was an ex-police officer or investigator of sorts, right? Yep. And so he would have covered, he would have known what to do to make this, this make sense. Well, like Casey specifically said, the ladder was not in the pool. If so, he's going to make it look like an accident. A cop would make sure the ladder's in the pool. Because how would Kaylee have gotten in the pool without the ladder? Like she wouldn't have been able to, right? So yep. he would have, I think, have put the ladder there. Yeah. Or she, or made it so that Casey found. Oh, hundred percent. Found Kaylee. Yeah, no, in that's the a pool. good point. He would have been like, "Oh no, you found your daughter drowned. This must have happened. Oh no, like, but." And then I it think doesn't make that sense. he would have gone about calling it in if it's an accident. Because they even said in the documentary, like there was a percentage in there, but a lot of. There's quite a high percentage of children yeah. dying in swimming pools and it was Florida, right? Yeah. So why would an individual, an ex-cop, make something look like an accident and then cover the tracks? That doesn't make any sense. No. Um, but regardless of that, the 31 days ensues and Casey um, claims that during those 31 days, because her father was like, I'll fix this. I'll make it all okay. She's fine. She claims that she truly believed Kaylee was not dead. She she claims that she's like, oh, I, th I thought she was fine. But then and she also- doesn't make any sense. But she also just gave up her daughter to the man who sexually assaulted her as a who child. Who she thinks is a monster. Who she thinks could be sexually assaulting her child. Mm -hmm. And then she also says, oh no, I believe my daughter's fine. And then she also goes on to believe, well, during that whole time, I was an emotional wreck and I was just not showing people. Mm -hmm. She's all over the fucking map and none of it makes any sense. Yeah. Which, okay, sometimes I'm playing de devil ad advocate for here, for her. Because if you do have mental health issues, like sometimes people are really good at hiding that. That's true. Right? I'm not saying then, that someone can't. In the documentary, she even at one point said like she'd be out with friends and then she would go into the bathroom and ball her face off and then come out and just like no one noticed. Her. But like you would usually probably notice. But she was... I believe she said she was living with her boyfriend boyfriend who had multiple roommates. So over the course of an entire month, you had at least a minimum of three individuals not notice one thing wrong. And those individuals were in the documentary too. Yes. And they didn't notice anything wrong. No. And Peacock TV, of course, very much so highlighted points where they changed their mind on things. But I do want to say if Peacock TV in the documentary was able to change their mind on things, that shows that they have a very open mind on the situation. They're not one-sided, mm -hmm. which is benefit to what they have in their perspective. Well, they came into the documentary one-sided and then the people doing the documentary would like educate them, I guess, in a way and like almost change their mind and get their, their change of mind on camera, Well, the, which was really – The one thing that they did that changed their mind because Casey's dad um, spoke against her in court. Yes. Okay? And when he did that, the result could have been the death penalty for Casey. So yeah. the question I believe they, Peacock TV specifically asked is why would her dad push the death penalty on his own daughter? And they're like, shit, I don't know. That's Which a good question. Which I also was kind of like, wow. He's not pushing the death penalty. He's just speaking the truth in court. Yeah. Which. Who said he's pushing death? In an investigator, like. He probably has done that a million times. Yeah. He's just speaking the truth against his daughter who put a, could have potentially killed his granddaughter. Mm -hmm. So he's speaking for his granddaughter. And lots of times they do say like when your child has a, a kid, you know, you – that's like your new kid almost. Like you come and visit your parents and you have a kid. Like you don't even exist anymore. It's all yeah. about the grandkid. Um, so – But yeah, no, Casey was really bad with a lot of those sort of things. Also in court, she claimed – to well in the documentary she came she claimed to be consistently calling her dad over and over and over again in those 31 days in those 31 days yeah however the screen caps they show in the documentary they show the phone call records but it's it goes by really really fast if you pause it 
she only phones about two times a day ish, one to two times a day. That's yeah. over and over and over again. Concern for your child. Like I honestly can't imagine that how she would not be freaking out. Yeah. I phone you from work like once a day. Yeah. Am I freaking out about you missing? No, if I'm freaking out about you missing, I, I'm phoning you a lot more than one or two times a day. That is a long span, a time, a long span of time where your brain, I don't know, it's going to make stories and, and make everything like wait, same, a lot worse. Right. Oh yeah. And I can't see her lasting that long thinking that her daughter is with this man that she thinks is a monster and that she doesn't end up going to authorities. Oh, hundred percent. So. Um, we only have a couple more things we want to touch on before we really get to uh, our thoughts on Peacock TV and the documentary as a whole. Uh, go ahead. This will, this one was uh, one that you wanted to talk about okay. specifically. So the okay. So the the biggest one was during in the documentary, um, Kaylee or Casey, sorry, went about watching. Kaylee. Kaylee. Casey. I just can't do it. So her funeral. So she couldn't attend her daughter's funeral because she was in jail at the time. Right. So in the documentary, this is the first time that she's seen her daughter's funeral, which. Which, if I can interject, I'm pretty sure if it was my child, I would be watching the funeral as soon as I could, not over 10 years later. Yeah. Like, I think that she would have watched that. Just saying. Anyway, during this funeral, I mean, and this is a public funeral. There was a lot of people in attendance. Live broadcast. The. That her dad and mom are speaking at the funeral, right? Yep. And so the dad is talking about his grandchild and describing her. And at one point he says that she, you know, he's going to miss her, her, what was it? He's, he's talking about like the, the wind in her hair and, and her, her the smell of her, her sweet, sweet sweat. sweat. And so in that moment to Casey, she, it's just like a light bulb, like. That's evidence. That's proof that he has like, he did the same thing to my daughter. Yeah. Like yeah. she just sexual like. sexual assault. It was so over the top and just like. Yeah. In what? that incident, she's like, he just admitted to the world that he's a, a pedo. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, if it was a grandma, would that be the same case? Yeah. If it was Casey saying it, would it be the same case? He's just trying to describe missing his, his grandchild. Mm -hmm. I mean, to, to be fair, there is. There's a chance that she's right, but the, just because he's trying to describe things that he's going to miss about it, the smell of her. And he wouldn't be, Smells huge for memory. Oh yeah. He wouldn't be doing that in front of everyone. Like no. that just logically doesn't make any sense. No. It doesn't make any sense. Again, there is a chance, but it's like, really? Come on. Yeah. So, but it, it was, it was over the top. That was an acting moment for me in that documentary. Oh, definitely. There it was, was over the top and it was just like. That's, that's proof. Like, yeah. I can't believe this. Like, it was like, whoa. And another big thing for me too is the defense team. Cause you're talking about them like being close, right? That did blow my mind a little bit actually. But what blew my mind about it was even if they're close, even if they're the defense team, they admit that Casey's never actually told them what really happened that night. However, they defended her in court. They do, but they're the, close. The they're working that, on the same team. The thing that got me is that they remain close. They literally believe her so much that they're they're like her new family. But this is the same defense team that defended, or at least one of the individuals that defended OJ Simpson in court. The glove doesn't fit. Fuck off. Yeah. That's another really infamous case of someone getting off scot free when it's like they done did it. Yeah. They done done did it. They did it. They did it. They did it. Did it. So they're good. They're good at their job. Clearly doesn't mean that they're good people. Yeah. But it did it did honestly blow my mind a little bit that they remained close and that they believed her so much. Yeah. Like that, that did blow my mind a little bit. I'm not going to lie. For their morals, that's that's a nice close knit group of individuals. I can appreciate that. However, I don't agree with why and who they are. And yeah. Ku Klux Klan was also a tight knit of people, right? <laughs> they were not cool individuals. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So. So basically – don't waste your time. No. Peacock TV, we are absolutely disappointed and disgusted in this documentary. Yeah, like just listen to a podcast. Honestly, I'm more confused than I was before. It was so unbelievably biased. It was so biased. 100%. Well, the thing that really brought it down to it being so biased, the first half or three quarters of the first episode, because there's three episodes, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, they're really letting the, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Prosecution team. 
talk. They're really letting Yeah, at first them we were like, it. we were slightly impressed at first. We were. We're like, okay, this isn't going to just be like a Casey show. Yeah. So the prosecution team got to talk about things that they were pushing in court. And after that, it was like, okay, the last quarter of the first episode was the defense team. Then the last two episodes was the defense team and Casey. 100%. Mm -hmm. Anytime Peacock TV asked Casey a question, they never followed up with anything. Everything clearly was rehearsed. So it was, so for example, like, did you kill your daughter? No. no. Moving and then on. it's like moved on. They didn't ask, okay, so you did this, 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 right? Or, well, how come this? Or why this? Or what about this? None of that. Zero journalism skills at all were put into this documentary. Mm -hmm. No real questions. Everything was pre-rehearsed, whether they actually gave her the lines ahead of time I, or they let her have multiple takes. I don't know. I feel like that was probably the only way she would ever admit it to doing or like agree to do this though. So? Yeah. Then why give her a voice? Because I mean, they're going to be making a lot of a lot of dough off this. What they should have done is let her agree to it and then put her on the spot, start asking those questions, go off script, get her on camera storming off like a little baby. Yeah. And there you go. She was, she refused to do the rest of the documentary. There's your documentary. I mean, it just would have been so nice to have had, I don't know, more from the parents or the brother. It did say in there that they had asked them to participate in this and they declined. Yeah. Or didn't respond or whatever. Yeah. But one of the biggest disappointments was A, Peacock TV and B, Casey most likely is getting a very large lump sum of money for doing this documentary. Yeah. Because like you say, without exactly what she wants, she probably wouldn't have done this in the first place. No. Um, they haven't disclosed if she's getting paid or not, which means she's, she's getting paid getting a shit paid. ton. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. It's very disappointing because it doesn't answer any questions. No. At all. So don't waste your time. We are happy to say that when we watched it, we watched a pirated version. So zero, any sort of analytics or money going to her. And from that. Ben was getting real angry. I was, I was getting so mad at this documentary, mostly because I, I, I knew what to expect from Casey. She's going to be lying consistently, not going to make she sense. Changed. She was going to be exact same person from before. And she still was. What really disappointed me from this, because I already had that baseline for Casey and I knew what to expect, was Peacock TV and how they conducted this. Absolute disgust. It was, it wasn't journalism. Mm -hmm. It was fabricated. It was, it was BS, 100%. Yeah. It's disappointing. That's just like the, the way I'm going to describe it. Yeah. So don't watch it. And that is uh, Casey Anthony, where the truth lies, where the truth lies. lies. Yeah. So. Thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate that, it. That's our take on it. This is, I don't know, maybe a pilot episode of a wicked life mm -hmm. where we just chill on our couch and talk about stuff. Are we allowed to still say stay wicked? Sure. Why not? Okay. Stay wicked. <laughs>